Lee Van Lith is indeed leading them in scoring. This is a team that has won five of its last six games. The only loss was an overtime heartbreaker to Notre Dame. Those two teams will play in Louisville on Sunday. Looking forward to that matchup. But right now, a lot on the line with Miami taking on the Cardinals. Last time they met in the ACC quarterfinals last year, and it was a thrilling finish. Miami was able to pull out the victory, and we are underway. Jalea Williams has the ball first for the Canes. And Cavender is number 14. Talked about her in the open, the Fresno State transfer. And a great look inside to find Pendande. I think Miami's got to continue to look inside, put some pressure on the interior defense for Louisville, and we know they're going to come with this full court press. And yeah, that was one of the things that Jeff Wall says he was expecting from this Miami defense. The ball thrown away. There is Jeff Walls in his 16th year at Louisville, his 13th straight 20 win season as they sit at 20 and 9. And he and uh, Katie Meyer, his uh, counterpart on the other sideline, they are the longest tenured coaches in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Louisville able to get it over the timeline this time. Acosta Robinson, things have really turned around for the Cardinals since she was put into the starting lineup, and it's rolled in by Dixon. And Miami starting five, already talked about Cavender and Williams. Jasmine Roberts has really had a resurgence in her career. Destiny Harden is the one who scored the last 15 points of that quarterfinal ACC tournament game last year to pull out the improbable victory. Miami went all the way to the ACC final. That was incredible, Pam. Never seen any like it. 15 straight points, including that game winner. Destiny Harden was on fire. Rebound taken down by Roberts, who was known for her rebound in defense. And Kono comes up with the rebound. Marika making another start. This new starting lineup, seventh straight game for them. And then there's Haley known as Van Lethal in Louisville. <laughs> well, Jeff Walls talked to us about his concern with the pressure, and he said, we don't want to just get it across half court. We want to get it across half court and score. They got an interior pass early, and then a driving kick for a three. Van Lith averaging about one and a half threes per game. Left over Williams. They found her, but it hit the back of the rim. Roberts able to get in there and put it in. Roberts, gosh, averaged only two points a game last year, up to eight and a half this season. And ten and a half in conference play. I mean, she's a player who once conference play hit, she has just taken it to another level. She was inserted into the starting lineup when Destiny Harden was out with injury, and she has taken the reins. And Lith does it again. Knocking it down this time from the top of the key. hit both of her three-pointers. And in ACC games, yeah, Louisville's second best, shooting the long ball. Van Lith, one of the reasons why. Inside Pendande, bottled up by Dixon and Cochran. And the ball goes over to Louisville. Our officials this evening, Mai Forsberg, Karen Priado, and Bruce Morris. Miami is a player down tonight. Lazaria Spearman, a very talented freshman, a lower body injury in their last game up at Syracuse, did not travel with the team. But the good news is Katie Meyer says they will get her back before the end of the season. And Spearman is 6'4 freshman, so it really puts Miami at a disadvantage on the interior in terms of their depth. Katie Meyer talks about, we like to play big against Louisville. Sometimes we've had some of those best matchups, and they're not going to be able to do it as much tonight. Already talked about them being the two longest tenured coaches. Katie Meyer, she's the older one as far as experience is concerned. Now in her 18th season, has done a terrific job. Jeff Walls coming over after being an assistant at the University of Maryland and has really taken this Louisville program to a different level. Yeah. 
Louisville continues to change up their defense on on-ball screens. Sometimes they're switching, sometimes they're hedging. It's going to be really important for Miami to, to read those coverages. If you get a switch and you have an advantage, you've got to attack right away. And being able to read that quickly is important. A foul over there on Olivia Cochran for Louisville, yeah, Jeff Wall's known for changing up his defenses and the way he covers things, not just possession by possession, but sometimes in the middle of a possession. I think that's very difficult. Now Harden steps to the line. Started her career at West Virginia. Leading his team in rebounding, steals, double-doubles. Had that double-double in the ACC tournament last year that sunk Louisville. He came in with the higher seed. Now pressure on Kono. And then Robinson turns the ball over. The Miami pressure working so far. Two teams already combining for five turnovers in the first four minutes of the game. Well, Louisville changing up their defense again, going to the 2-3 zone, really keeping Miami off balance. Leah Williams, though, attacks the zone, gets her first and, bucket. And I think that's what Miami has to do. They have to continue to find ways to get the ball in the paint. Post-entry passes have been there. Attacks off the bounce are there as well. Force the rotation to make the right decision. Cavender coming up with the rebound. She's a good rebounding guard for this team. And steps taken before the shot. Another Miami turnover. So Morgan Jones now coming in, along with Chrislyn Carr for Louisville. Jeff Walls changing that lineup and got some scoring power coming off, some scoring punch coming off the bench. And Haley Van Lith stepped on the sideline. About 30 points a game off the bench. And that's one of the things that he said. He said, I was looking to try to get that second unit a little bit of a scoring punch, getting some energy. Minutes haven't been affected necessarily, still playing the same amount of minutes. But this one right here, Mikasa Robinson, who leads the team in assists, almost eight a game. Her experience on the floor, her decision making, her playing the point guard position. The ball moves. It moves more efficiently, it moves quicker. Averaging 18 points a game since that change, or 18 assists a game since that change. And Akasa Robinson, or Jeff Walls can't say a nice, enough nice things about her. There's Jones has it rim out, but the offensive putback nicely done by Liz Dixon. And Liz Dixon's another one he had mentioned to us. She had played all of last season coming off the bench, allowed her to, to see the game, get into the game flow as Cavender knocks down a jumper. And he thought it would benefit her more being able to get into the flow, see what the game is going to be like, and then come out and give him a punch, and it has. Drawing contact, Pendande got a piece of Olivia Cochran. Who, who will shoot free throws when we come back. We'll also take a look at how Louisville is honoring Black History Month. You might have noticed it in their uniforms. This, in conjunction with its member institutions, have identified February 18th to 26th as ACC Unity Week. ACC Network presented by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're better off with an Ally. And there you see the uniforms, uh, special design, and Lift Every Voice and Sing also presented before the game today. And Uniforms for Louisville in celebration of Black History Month, both the men's and women's teams wearing special uniforms. And you see both feature a theme with cream colors and golden flowers, flowers reflecting those regional to Louisville, including the state flower, the goldenrod, the cream color in homage to cream of the planet, referring to Africa's abundance of natural resources. 
And those are some good-looking unis that Louisville's got on tonight. Yes, they are. Olivia Cochran at the line. Gets one out of two. Game knotted up at 11 apiece. Both teams shooting the ball well so far. Turnovers have been an issue. Great defense by Marissa Russell, number 13. But Williams was able to recover. I like how aggressive Miami is being to the rim. They're finding ways to break down the defense. They're staying in attack mode, getting two feet in the paint. And this is a Miami team that's coming off of an effort against Syracuse. 52 points in the paint. But still, Katie Meyer was not happy at all with their performance up there at Syracuse. The paint points were probably the only highlight for her. Disappointed in the effort. And looking for something different tonight. Gave Syracuse a lot of credit. Syracuse is a team that has much improved. They sure are. Felicia Leggett Jack doing an outstanding job there. Getting some big wins, positioning themselves to, to get in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, right now, Charlie Cream says they're in, and that's in. The three ball dropped in. You know, CC Carr is instant offense. I mean, she is a player who can light it up, leads the ACC in three point field goal percentage. You've got to know where she is. And fourth in the nation in three-point percentage at 47% on the season. Carr, a Syracuse transfer after starting out at Texas Tech. And that's charge. And Lith drew it. Miami wants to run and Harden just attacking the rim. Van Lith does a great job of establishing herself and taking the contact. First foul on Harden. We get some words of wisdom from Coach Meyer before she takes a seat. Harden's second leading scorer on this team just behind Haley Cavender. Well, Miami going to the 2-3 zone. Yeah, Louisville really likes that screen, the screener action on the interior, trying to get Harris a touch inside. Van Lith, good job by Cavender to close out, but then Haley Van Lith beat the other Haley with a little step back. Well, Van Lith, three for three from the floor. Right now, if you're the Canes, you gotta find a way to close the gap. You gotta be a little bit closer when she catches the ball. Force her to be uncomfortable. Now Cavender tries to answer on the other end. Russell couldn't handle it. Van Lith comes away. It was a good look for Nyla Harris, a freshman from Orlando. Now Williams and another offensive foul call against the Canes. I think Kyla Oldacre inside. Going to post up, and you can see the elbow comes high, extended arm, and, and gets Harris. Old Acre with a contact and then a block. Carr with the miss. Offensive rebound, terrific. Russell getting it inside. We asked Jeff Walls, what's your biggest key for tonight? And first thing out of his mouth was rebound the basketball. Rebound it on both ends, giving themselves multiple possessions. It's tough to box out in the 2-3 zone, and the Cardinal is taking advantage of it. It's a 7-0 run that is broken by Jasmine Roberts' second basket. As we approach a minute to go in the first quarter, Russell tried to get the bounce pass to Dixon, but it was knocked out of bounds.
by Miami. Eight seconds to shoot for the Cardinals. Van Lith goes out for Robinson. Carr has to put one up, does. Old Acre could not come up with it cleanly. And who else but Mikasa Robinson gets in there? Absolutely. Mikasa Robinson is known for that. The hustle plays, the gritty plays. Jeff Wall is saying this, she is everything that you want out of a player to coach. And you see she's getting in the mix. Since she's tough, she's gritty. She is everything that we want players to be in this Louisville program. Like her toe might have been on that line, though. Flicks it into Carr. Dixon over Oldacre, couldn't get the bounce, and now Cavender with the shot clock off. You are not seeing double. There are two Cavenders out there, 14 and 15. Hannah's number 15. Old Acre with the miss, but the putback attempt by Roberts wouldn't go. And Louisville takes a three-point lead after one quarter of play. Haley Van Lith starting out hot early, three for three from the floor. Today, including the, the game that follows us, NC State and Duke. Duke trying to nail down the regular season championship. And you see the last three meetings in this matchup have gone down to the last possession. And a Cavender gets it over to the top of the key. And it is nailed down by Carla Arievitz. And Carla Arievitz is one that Katie Meyer told us is going to be really important in this ball game. Her experience, another ball handler on the floor that can recognize the changing defenses. I mean, she's a player who has struggled from the three-point line much of the year, but hits a big one right there. Yes, just 17% from three coming into this game. But uh, there you get a look at Arievitz, who is from Croatia, started every game last year, now coming off the bench for Coach Meyer. And Pam, mention. a year ago, a year ago, she shot at 36% from three. So she is a player who has that ability and capability. It's a confidence thing right now. So a good thing for her to see it go through the net. Yeah, especially the first one you put up there. Haley Van Lith. And the drive by Morgan Jones. The transfer from Florida State. Liz Dixon doing a good job of drawing contact. She will be heading to the free throw line for the first time tonight. Foul on Pendande, that is her second, and that's big, right? Because they're, they're already down a post player with Spearman not on the road trip. It is, and, and you lose Spearman, who is 6'4", Pendande now 6'4". The only other size on the interior is Kyla Oldacre. We want to remind you tomorrow that you could catch the number one women's lacrosse team in the country right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app as they go to Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech starting out at 7 Eastern time. This is where when you have that lack of depth on the interior, you, you've got to really extend 94 feet. You've got to try to, to pressure Louisville, make them take long, quick shots, or turn them over in the full court. Because if they can get it into the half court and get it into the paint, they can get some easy buckets. Now they're going to just double check on who the foul was called on. That's Karen Priado with my Forsberg on the left. As they take a look, we'll take a timeout. Since I was little, I wanted to be a part of a team. I've played just need assess to Lola Pendande and 
much to the dismay of, of Katie Meyer and her staff, it really does inhibit their depth in the interior. Yeah, absolutely. Already thin in that position, and now you see Pendande on the bench early on in the second quarter, sitting down with the two personals, Liz Dixon at the line, off to a really good start offensively in this game. Meanwhile, on the other end, how about Destiny Harden not even with a shot attempt? That's big. I think the Hurricanes have to find a way to get Destiny Harden the ball in her hands. It was Harden, who was sort of the one-person wrecking crew last year in the ACC quarterfinal victory. Arievitz coming in, this time off glass. So third year playing for Miami, started out at Wyoming. Very different. Larry me, Wyoming, a little Miami, bit, Florida. Yeah, a little bit. Especially in February. <laughs> Van Lynn, good luck, but gosh, Dixon couldn't get it to go. Arievitz into all day for Carla. Arievitz really making an impact. Yes, she is. She's coming in and really giving this team a lift, giving them a lot of energy. And Miami dominating on the interior. 14 points in the paint already. And another turnover. And Miami gives it right back. And a Cavender, though, takes it away. Dwyer looked at her feet, then a very difficult drive. Harden could not save it in. That's a couple of missed opportunities for Miami at the rim. They've done a really good job of, of not taking quick, long shots, of attacking in the paint. And right there, two turnovers. And you can see Katie Meyer not happy about it. Doesn't have to say a word. You see it all in her face. Katie Meyer was a tremendous player at Duke. And has been in charge at Miami now for in her 18th season. Kristen Carr off the rim. Robinson doing Robinson things. Chases it down. And Lift just needs a little bit of space to get the shot off. Harden grabs the board. Anna Cavender. And at the same time as Arievitz, that's picked up by Robinson. Lays it back. Russell with the miss. Now end-to-end -end action. Dwyer takes it right to Van Lith, who fouled it. Miami is now shooting just 37% from the floor, but that's the number that's going to really upset both of these coaches, each with seven turnovers. Well, fortunately for both coaches, neither team able to take advantage of it. A lot of the turnovers have been dead ball turnovers. It allows you to set your defense, but certainly missed opportunities to give yourself a chance on offense. And Jeff Walls was talking yesterday about his team and their turnovers. He said they can't come in bunches. We're going to have a couple here and there, but they can't come multiple possessions back to back. And that's really where they're looking to fine tune on the offensive end. Yeah, very concerned about this Miami defense. Miami has scored just four points off turnovers. Louisville, six of their 19. And Shea Dwyer, the sophomore from Toronto, gets her first point. Played her senior year in the Webb School in Tennessee, was the high school player of the year in that state. And gets Miami's lead up to five. Their biggest of the game. Miami now on a 6 nothing run to take the lead. Van Lith gets it and got fouled and looks to the crowd to get him fired up. Well, Haley Van Lith started the ball game, knocking down some long range jumpers. So you have to close the gap. And when you do, she does a great job of attacking the paint. Dialed by Oldacre. 
And there you see what Haley has done. Just a brilliant career and just a junior. Completes the three-point play. And Pam, that's two on Old Acre as well. So for Miami, both bigs in foul trouble right away. So gonna have to go small. I'd look for them to speed, try to speed things up with some full court pressure, switching on on ball and off ball screens defensively. Big time pressure from Louisville after the made free throw. Again, Miami is down as Arias Spearman not able to make the trip. 6'4 freshman and their two bigs are in, but each have two personal fouls. Area hits. Cupped out, rebound Robinson, and another whistle and another foul on Miami. Dwyer picks up her first. And she heads over. CC Carr, number three, back into the ball game for Louisville, bringing it up. Kono also on the floor, three guard lineup now for Louisville. Kono traveled. Senior from Japan who is Made her seventh start tonight. Anna Cavender getting some good minutes here in the first half. Usually doesn't play as much as Haley. They're both in the game together, and that is a charge on Harden, who might have gotten the worst of the contact. And that is two on her. Well, you've got to know when Mikasa Robinson is on the floor, this is what she does. She is one of the best in the country at getting in position and taking the offensive foul. So Harden goes to the bench. The third Hurricane with two fouls. She does have two points tonight. That came from the free throw line. And the only other player who could play that quote unquote post position from an interior defense standpoint. We mentioned Lazaria Spearman, not with the team, lower body injury. Pendande, Oldacre in foul trouble. Oldacre has to come back into ballgame. Louisville down by five, has now cut it to just two. Van Lith. <laughs> Got away from Arievitz and then stepped back. Are you kidding me with that shot, Pam? Oh my goodness, Haley Van Lith makes it look so easy. She's got 13 points, has only missed one of her six shots and it's tied the game up. Fifth tie of the game, Van Lith gets in the passing lane but couldn't save it. Well, you got to run her off of the three-point line, and just when you do, stops on a dime. The fadeaway off one leg. The thing about Haley Van Lith is, you know, you're not going to see anything in the game that she doesn't do in practice every day. How hard she she works, whether it's individual workouts, workouts in practice, she goes game speed all the time. So she is consistently ready for the moment. Yeah, Geth plays a lot of minutes, but is in great condition, and Miami was unable to get a shot off that time. Katie Meyer's team has not scored in the last two and a half minutes. Casa Robinson easily able to break the pressure. And Lith hanging out by the three-point line, but they get it into Dixon, who just couldn't roll it in. Cochran, same thing, Dixon. Couple of offensive rebounds. 
Well, that's too easy. Too easy. Louisville going to work on the offensive glass. Miami just standing and looking. You got to be, especially when you're small, you got to be committed to, to finding a body and boxing out. Eight offensive rebounds already for Louisville. Drought now over three minutes for the Kings. And the crowd getting into it at the Yum Center. Tough shot rolls off the rim for Haley Cavender. Carr. Another offensive board, this time by Cochran, and it will lead to free throws. And what an effort by the Cardinals on the offensive glass. First shots aren't going in, but they are pursuing the glass. Cochran, Dixon inside, both going to work. And that foul on Jalea Williams, and I, I think Miami very fortunate because you saw Oldacre was in there as well. So now that is two fouls on Williams. She's disagreeing with the call. I, I don't know that I've, I've ever seen a player just put their hand up and say, <laughs> yes, yes, I fouled. Back in the day when you had to, maybe. <laughs> Olivia Cochran with her second trip to the free throw line. All three of the points coming from there so far this evening. Leading his team in rebounding and chewing up the offensive glass. Takes a seat as Nyla Harris comes back in. Louisville's run is now 9-0. Arievitz, that's a good look, but she missed everything. Miami can't hit anything right now. Well, Louisville's tightened it up on the defensive end. Early in the ball game, Miami was able to attack the paint, get some easy looks. Louisville's picked up their defensive intensity, their energy, their pressure. Van Lith got it blocked by Haley Cavender. And Hannah gets her shot rejected. Robinson again. Mikasa Robinson just impacts the game in so many ways. She's going to watch thing, that right? highlight. Yeah, Steph, I mean, you look at her and you're going, okay, here's a kid who only averages about five points a game, has never scored more than 10 points in her entire career in a single game, but that, that doesn't even come close to doing her justice. It doesn't, and what she does is she makes it really difficult for Jeff Walls to not play her because of what she does on the defensive end, because of all the intangibles, all those things that don't show up on the stat sheet. And oh, by the way, since she's been a starter, they've assisted on 70% of their made field goals. And that's because she understands the offense. She understands how to get it moving. And this time, she did it all by herself. Mikasa Robinson with the finish. 11 nothing run, timeout. I don't like to spend a ton of time shopping, but I like to look good. For me, Poshmark makes that so easy. And whenever I get tired of something, I just relist it back on Poshmark. It's honestly a little addicting. Making some money I can spend, keep my wardrobe fresh. Butcher Box delivers grass-fed beef, organic free-range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught seafood, and so much more. Receive your special offer today. Welcome back to Louisville, an 11 nothing run for the Cardinals. Boy, Mikasa Robinson doing everything right now. Yeah, she sure is. Defensive stops, gets out in transition, gets the easy two. She is the heart and soul of this team and of this Louisville program. And Yes, she's Mikasa, certainly <laughs> is. You see what she's done in these last six games as a starter. And you no, know, she makes her mark on the defensive end of the floor. She is a lockdown defender. She does everything that shows up in the stat sheets and everything that doesn't as well. And 
Now, Jeff Walls just cannot say enough good things about what she's meant to this program. He said, you know, she graduated. We gave her an opportunity, told her I'd help her if she wanted to go somewhere else. And she said, no, I want to stay here and I want to continue to build on this legacy. Yeah, what a great career. She's played the most games in the history of Louisville women's basketball. As Coach Walls also told us that he had gone to her with some transfers coming in and knowing that might impact her playing time. And she was like, go for it. It's the, the quintessential team player. And they have been on fire since she got into the starting lineup. Winners of five with her last six. Shows she's human by dragging her pivot foot there. But Mikasa graduated from Ashland, Kansas, and the back-to-back -back ACC All-Defensive honors and up for Defensive Player of the Year certainly this year, as uh, the voting will all uh, take place. Has to be in by Monday, and this is what Jeff says. And she does. There, there's no doubt that there's effort 100% of the time from guard everybody pretty much on the floor. And that's what he calls her, a true coach's dream. Dixon with the block this time. Miami has to stay in the zone because of foul trouble, but they've got to do a better job of securing the board. They are not. And there's a foul on another offensive rebound attempt. They got Jasmine Roberts. We go now with 10 offensive rebounds in this game. Nine second chance points. Miami's missed its last eight shots from the floor. Here's Harris, the freshman. Tuesday night's men's basketball doubleheader on the ACC Network and the ESPN app starts in beautiful Charlottesville, 7 Eastern, as Virginia hosts Clemson, who wants to get back on the bubble. Then it's Virginia Tech and Louisville. Virginia trying to bounce back from a loss. And Marissa Russell coming back into the game for Harris. Jeff Walls keeping some fresh legs in there. Meanwhile, Miami has been stuck on 24 for a long time. Almost six minutes. And another turnover. Boy, Steph, when you get in one of these ruts, I mean, what, what can you do? Well, they're going to have to find a way to get some easy buckets, and whether that's coming with some more full court pressure, and that's tough to do if you don't make a shot, right? And also tough to do when Haley Van Lip continues to light you up. Haley Van Lip, third three of the game. She's got 16 points. Well, Louisville changes up their zones. They're coming with the full court press. They've got more active in the half court. Early in the ball game as Old Haker gets her third foul, the offensive foul. Early in the ball game, Miami was getting what they wanted in the paint. Now they're settling for quick, early, contested jump shots. This shot doesn't go in by Dwyer. Old Haker working on the glass, but who else but Mikasa Robinson there to take the charge. Miami in this quarter, three of 12 from the floor, but that was after a a quick start. And this is where you got to go. Off of those missed shots. Put some pressure on the D. Marjevic finally ends the drought, which had gone six and a half minutes. Robinson somehow able to get around the defender and put it home. Here's a player not known for her offensive moves. That was a beauty. The simplicity, Pam. The shot fake, the pivot up and under. Mikasa Robinson, fundamental textbook. For Miami to win, but give Louisville the credit. They turned it up on defense and, and really took Miami out of everything that they wanted to do. Miami already shorthanded. 
Azaria Spearman did not make the trip. Lower body injury. And then Kyla Oldacre, one of their bigs. Three personal fouls in that first half. And Donde pick up, picked up a couple of quick ones. So, yes, Katie Meyer had to go with a small lineup, make some adjustments. Morgan Jones get things going here in the second half. Well, Jeff Walls comes out of halftime with a little bit of a different lineup. Morgan Jones starting the second half, and they like that lob to her against the zone. Morgan's first points of the game. Had started 23 games coming off the bench. In the last half a dozen games. During which time Louisville has had some great success. Rebound off the Roberts miss. Casa Robinson delivers it right where it needs to be. To Harris. Oh, what a game Robinson is putting together. Julia Williams, Miami continues to be cold from the floor. Van Lith finding some space. Miss corralled by Roberts. One and only meeting between these two teams in the regular season, fighting for seeding. Louisville wanting to stay in the top four of the ACC so they can get a double bye on the tournament, which begins next week in Greensboro. That is a nice move by Haley Cavender, but boy, she is struggling. Has missed five of her six shots tonight. Yeah, you mentioned Destiny Harden, only one field goal attempt, and Haley Cavender has not been able to get going as well. And those are two players who carry a lot of the load offensively for this Miami Hurricane ball squad. Top scorers for their Miami team. And then the shot falls down for the first points of the second half for Williams. Lee Van Lip continuing to be aggressive. She always does a good job of getting to the line, gets there about four and a half times per game, leading her team in that category. And in the first half, you talked about the foul trouble for the Canes. Louisville committed only two fouls, or were called for two fouls in the first half. Miami 11. That's one of the best free throw shooters in the ACC at just over 87%. And with the made free throws, they can set up their press. Williams able to get through it. Cavender and Van Lith, the two Haley's, and one of the more difficult shots of the night for Cavender, and she got it to go. Harden coming up with the rebound. Let's see if Cavender decides to shoot it. No, gets it over to Roberts. Robinson with Harden right next to her. Both of them hit the floor. It's the first one on Mikasa Robinson. Last six games in which she started tonight, number seven, averaging seven and a half assists per game. She's got four so far tonight, and Harden threw it towards the sideline. Katie Meyer came up with it. Miami just not, not able to get anything going offensively. Early in the ball game, they were able to get attack in the paint, post entry passes, attack off the bounce, and not able to get anything offensively right now. You got to give Louisville credit, but also the ball movement and player movement not there for the Canes. And Dunde trying to post up. She's playing with two fouls. Battling down there with Cochran. Haley Cavender, a little bit of space and drains it. That's what we're used to seeing from her. Yeah, and certainly what the Hurricanes score. need. Yep. Morgan Jones 
You mentioned it, got the start here in the second half, and she's got a couple of buckets. Robinson is slow getting up behind the play. Finally comes into the fourth, to the court rather, and the front court as Pendande just picked up her third. Foul trouble mounting now for the Canes. Old Acre got three in the first half, and now Pendande has three. With the foul, Nyla Harris steps to the free throw line. Where she is one of two this evening. <laughs> Jeff Wall is very impressed with his freshman from Orlando. So she does a lot of the, the dirty work. Good rebounder, getting better on the offensive end. And and another one out of two trippers, Haley. Her physicality, her willingness to, to get on the glass, get on the board. All right, Cavender, two threes in a row. Hey, this is a Miami team that, that's shown their ability to come back. They came back against Florida State, were able to, to, to make a run and win that ball game. They can score quickly and they can score in bunches. And if their offense can start to fuel something on the defensive end for them. And Louisville knows all too well about that comeback ability. Cochran down the lane. Old Acre comes away with it. Harris might have gotten away with a walk. Cavender, step back three. Cochran coming up with the miss. Robinson has been on the floor a lot today. Just picks herself up, gets back into it. It's a little shaken up over there. You see how she's just directing traffic. She understands what it is that they want out of each offensive possession, calling for the ball, pointing to where everyone needs to go, and there's Nyla Harris getting to the rim. I mean, this is just a terrific rip and go. Right by Destiny Harden. And Destiny Harden is a good defender. Shows you Nyla Harris's ability, and that's the third foul on Harden. Uh, so three Hurricanes now with three fouls apiece. Harden in the last couple of games coming in on fire, averaging 18 points and nine and a half rebounds. But gosh, now she goes to the bench with just two points and three fouls. And there you see it, the two bigs, Old Acre and Pendande, and now Harden, one of their best scorers who absolutely just torched Louisville last year. That Talked about that comeback in the ACC quarterfinal, a personal, personal 15 to nothing run. As they came from behind to win. And one thing Katie Myers said is doesn't get talked enough about was the defense her team played, shutting out Louisville during that stretch. Oh, Haley Cavender. With she's three and a half. Up. She's starting to heat up, and if you're Miami, you've got to feel really good about the fact that this is a single-digit ball game, was a single-digit ball game, <laughs> when you're in such foul trouble. But Haley Van Lith is money. Now the two Haley's lighten it up now from the outside. That's four threes for Van Lith. Cavender has four as well, three of them in this quarter. So a timeout. Haley Cavender with the corner three, but Haley Van Lith had the answer. The scene in the eye. The ACC's Committee for Racial and Social Justice, in conjunction with its member institutions, have identified February 18th through the 26th as ACC Unity Week. Joining you on this clear night in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Another good and engaged crowd on hand. Louisville leading Miami 50 to 40. Uh, Miami in this 
quarter has already scored more points than they did in the second quarter. And how about Haley Ca Cavender? She's got 11 of their 13 points in this quarter. Well, she's starting to heat up from the three-point line, really struggled early in the first half, has gotten some open looks and been able to knock them down. Cavender, a very prolific scorer when she played for Jamie White at Fresno State, three-time All-Mountain West Conference performer, led the league both in rebounding and scoring last season. Rebounding, yes, is a 5'6 guard. Mikasa Robinson. Louisville is so good after a timeout. Execution, understanding what they're trying to get, going to a go-to right away, and that's Mikasa Robinson getting to the rim. Yeah, just so steady. She's now got six points, six assists, and five rebounds. Haley missed that one wide left. Cavender, her twin Hannah out there as well right now for Miami. Hannah number 14, Haley number 15. And they have the audacity to have the, the same hairstyle tonight. <laughs> Last time we had them, one was in the braid, one was in the straight pony. So Van Lith. The shimmy shake to get herself open. Haley Van Lith has improved so much in how quickly she gets that shot off in the pull-up. Now you know you want to run her off the three-point line, but she gets it off so quick. Doesn't need a lot of time, doesn't need a lot of space. So seven-nothing run for Miami. The lead is back up, or for Louisville, the lead's back up to 14 points. Gatorade Fit. Fitness starts from the inside out. Get healthy, real hydration. Welcome back. It has been the night of Haley's. Haley Cavender with 11 over 14 points here in the third quarter. But gosh, Steph Van Lith just, you know, they, they make a run and then Haley Van Lith knocks down a three herself. Yeah, Haley Van Lith has answered every run that, that Miami has made. But it's certainly a good sign for the Canes that Haley Cavender has gotten herself going. The unfortunate thing is foul trouble has really inhibited Miami's ability to have a balanced attack. Three players with three fouls, including Destiny Harden. Pendande has three. She's out there and hits. Her second basket, the senior from Spain. Played a couple of years at Utah before coming down to Coral Gables. And Kitty Meyer has to have her in the game, so Lola Pendande has to be incredibly disciplined on the defensive end. Playing straight up, don't take any chances. Same with Destiny Harden. And they got to find a way to get Harden going offensively. Harden with just two points, both of them coming from the free throw line in the first half. Arjevitz gave Miami a nice punch off the bench in the first half, and there's a good finish on the break from Pendande. And the timeout has been taken. Well, Area Vets, you mentioned it came in, has given this team a lift and continues to do so. Out in transition, Lola Pendande able to run the floor. That's one of the reasons that she's so important for this team, to her ability not just to run the floor, but to be a presence on the interior offensively. Now Miami is one of the nine teams that Charlie Green Cream says will get in from the ACC into the NCAA tournament, has them projected now as a 10 seed. And right now they are tied for six in the Atlantic Coast Conference as all eyes point towards Greensboro and the ACC tournament, Miami tied with North Carolina right now for six, but have the tiebreaker because they beat Carolina head to head. And Syracuse became the ninth team to get in, according to Cream, in part because they beat Miami the other day. So after the quick timeout, Louisville Inbounding the ball up by 10. Louisville's hit four of its last five shots after Miami got to within, or got in to within single digits, I should say, of the lead. Robinson almost saved it, but it's taken away by Harden. Still looking for her first field goal of the game, and she drew the foul and then plowed into some people behind the basket support.
Mahardin trying to split the defenders and looks like she gets caught up with Robinson. Fortunate that it it wasn't any worse than worse off than it it looked. Yeah, got clipped from by Robinson inadvertently from behind, and now Destiny Harden. Tough, tough night offensively after coming off a 19-point effort against Syracuse. Katie Meyer really enjoying it. Says that she's kind of like her, the extension of her on the floor, but. Not feeling it right about now. Frustrating night. Miami goes home to play Virginia at noon on Sunday. Louisville hosts Notre Dame noon on Sunday. We will be there on ESPN for what should be a great rematch after Notre Dame took them down in overtime on a Olivia Miles prayer of a shot. How about coming into the game, Josie Williams, throwing up a three and splashing it? She didn't play at all in the first half. She sure didn't, and she's only one for 12 from the three-point line in conference play. But she came in, knocked that down with confidence. The dribble punch by Haley Van Lith finding Williams who knocks it down. Williams, a transfer from Utah Valley, two-time all-WAC performer. At that school, Van Lith picks up the loose ball, doesn't have numbers. Inside, they lost Williams. But she was found by Russell. That was a great decision by Russell. She could have taken a pull-up jump shot. She was open, but she found the better play, the next pass. Haley to Hannah Cavender, and then Pendonde buries it, and a chance for a three-point play. Well, this is just a great drive on the rotation. Pendande makes herself available. Carr late on the rotation. First foul on Carr. Pendande delivers. Miami's hit its last three field goals, but Louisville just as hot inside a minute now. Van Lith off the back iron. Haley Cavender lost it. Haley Cavender just two points away now from 2,000 in her career. When you hit 1,000, that's a big deal. She's doubling that. And she still has another year of eligibility left. Could come back next year, told us earlier this season. She has not decided yet. Look at Shanice Johnson over there on the bench, somebody you know a little bit. Absolutely, Momo had the pleasure of coaching her in Indiana with the fever. Back at her alma mater now as an assistant for Katie Meyer. And I know that Katie Meyer really enjoys having her there. Somebody who can communicate and has the experience. She still looked like a pretty darn good player when we saw her at practice when we yeah. had them earlier in the year. Yeah, I think she could go a few minutes. That's a travel. <laughs> Shanice and her, or Momo as her friends call her, in her second year on the bench for Katie Meyer. And that puts a capper on the third quarter. Louisville outscored Miami by three. Jeff Walls up. I think a very unpredictable and could be just a wild and wacky ACC tournament. We have three lost teams at the top of the league. That usually doesn't happen. Yeah, Jeff Walls talking to us yesterday said he's never seen it like this in the league. This is his 16th year in charge of Louisville. And before that, he was at Maryland when they were in the ACC. He's seen a lot of ACC tournaments and action, and this one is shaping up to be so much fun. 
when you think about this league and you know there's no clear cut front runner right now there, there's there's not one team that has has proven to to be heads and tails above anyone else so it's certainly going to make for a fun atmosphere at the acc tournament we'll be there can't wait yep we'll be doing the uh, morning session it's going to be in greensboro coliseum starting on wednesday running through the championship a week from Sunday for CSPN. And for the first time, we have the entire tournament. ACC Network going to have a lot of those early games for you. So that's uh, going to be great, every single game. Well, Miami will finish at home against Virginia as they try to keep their tournament, their NCAA tournament resume strong. And that will be improved by any wins they can get in the ACC tournament. And Lith cut off. But that was Liz Dixon finding that little soft spot on the floor and Van Lith found her. Liz Dixon started the ball game being a go-to on the offensive end and got quiet. Haley Van Lith got hot and Dixon finding her way again. You know, Liz Dixon's improvement in this program has been tremendous. I mean, she started when she came here from Georgia Tech, didn't play a whole lot, played very limited minutes, continued to improve, continued to grow, had an impact year last year, and Jeff Walls just cannot sing enough of her praises. Third year in this program, Destiny Harden has finally gotten her first field goal of the game. It's a three. And if you, again, if you're in Miami right now, you string a couple of stops and scores together. I mean, they've shown the ability to score. They've been hindered by foul trouble, but you gotta find a way to get, get, a, get some stops back to back. Cochran, in and out. Rebound taken down by Pendande, who scored the last seven points for Miami in the third quarter. After Cavender took over in the first part of the third, and now Harden is fouled. That right there was a heads up play by Cavender. Destiny Harden had just hit a three. You could start to feel a little bit of momentum for the Canes, and Cavender comes down in transition, knows where Harden is. Gets her the ball. Haley Cavender, very heady player. Harden shaking up a little bit. You see Haley Van Lith, the closeout comes right underneath in the landing area of Destiny Harden. Second foul on Van Lip as we take a timeout. Champions. For this coach to get back in the NBA, you're fired. He'll have to take this team all the way. I am going to be your basketball coach. Where do you get this guy? He just showed up one day. Uh, Woody Harrelson. Coach, do you cover karaoke well, with I, us? I don't like I it. Get Go all in. That's what I basketball is presented by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an Ally. And before the game tonight, Valerie Combs was honored. They gave her one of those cool jerseys, got the ACC Unite Award and class of 76, and she was the first African-American signed to a basketball scholarship in Louisville, and all she did, Steph White, was score 1,000 points. And get inducted into the Hall of Fame. I mean, certainly a a great opportunity for Louisville to honor her here tonight. Yeah, perfect night. She gets that really nice jersey, and and that was that was way back when. That was back when uh, before the NCAA was uh, in charge, if you will, of women's basketball. The old AIAW. Wait, well, that's before your time, but a little, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, you know. But uh, that's that's really awesome that she was invited back by Louisville. Destiny Harden over there on the bench. 
shaken up after she was, she shot that three-point attempt, it was favoring a finger. And the officials during that timeout went over to see if there was anything extra on that foul by Van Lith. So just a common foul on Van Lith. But Destiny Harden will not be able to shoot the free throw, so Jasmine Roberts goes. Silver Harris, the athletic trainer for Miami, over there looking at Destiny Harden and her hand. Coming up next, we have more college basketball coming your way from the triangle as Duke hosts NC State. Duke right now, the in first place in the ACC, trying to nail down that top seed. Taking on the Wolfpack, hoping to get some injured players back for NC State. That game is coming up shortly at the top of the hour. Shot clock winding down now. Robinson drives. And in. Costa How about Robinson, man. I mean, last six games, seven points, almost seven rebounds, nearly eight assists a ball game. She is just taking advantage. And you know, sometimes when you're in this moment, she's a graduate senior. It starts winding down. You feel that sense of urgency. And every moment you get to step on the floor. You, you, you want to you show out, and Mikasa Robinson has done that. Putting together another terrific night. Eight points, six rebounds, seven assists for Robinson. Has a block shot as well. Dixon cleans up. Liz Dixon has just quietly gone about her business. You know, she's coming off of a 13-point, 6-9 from the floor and 12-board ball game against BC and is just continuing to build on it. Match that with 13 points. Arjevitz with the miss off Robinson. So Miami hangs on to the ball. Down a dozen. Robinson making her seventh straight start. For Jeff Walls tonight, senior day coming up on Sunday when Notre Dame comes to town. In an unfamiliar position for Louisville, Pendonde got it tied up by her again. Mikasa Robinson, seems like there's three of them on the floor at, every, sure uh, at every moment. <laughs> It sure does. I mean, she just has a knack and an understanding and a great feel. Oh, she was, there was a mismatch. She did her job, got in front of, of Pendande, and then able to get a hand on the ball. Well, another terrific play for Robinson. Possession arrow gets it back to the Cardinals. As we approach five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Louisville with a strong close to the third, taking the lead. They haven't given it up, and Mikasa Robinson is having herself a night. Her 10 points ties her career high. She's done that four times in her career, has never gotten to 11 points. It's very likely. Two more ball games for Mikasa Robinson in the Yum Center, and she is continuing to impress these fans. And th th I mean, this is a kid who, who's a local kid who stayed home, decided to come to Louisville, has been a part of so much success. This year was a little, a bit of an anomaly for her, not used to the struggles that this program had at the beginning of the year. They probably lost more games this year than in her entire career, right? 
but continues to be a leader for this team, continued to be a connector for this team, and one of the reasons that this is a team that's peaking at the right time. Yep, nine losses for this team this year, just two all of last year. And Robinson, we've talked about it, and it bears repeating, though, especially now when, when people seem to to transfer maybe because their ice cream shop isn't to their liking wherever they're going. This kid <laughs> stuck it out, did, wasn't playing a lot first couple of years, right? Cup, you know, was sort of a role player and is, is really reaping the benefits now and have, having a great senior season. Haley Cavender, oh my goodness, that's a tough shot. And that is fitting that career points number 2000 scored on that drive. Russell, good job to get herself free, but couldn't get it home. Boy, Liz Dixon just continuing to work getting offensive rebounds. Haley Cavender attacking the rim, and this is a heck of a move against a terrific defender in Mikasa Robinson and her 2,000th point. What a career for Cavender. Started things off with Jamie White out at Fresno State, where she scored most of those 2,000 points. But it, it was, you know, coming from Fresno, there was some question, how would she acclimate herself into the ACC, one of the Power Five conferences? And the answer is, she's done quite nicely. Thank you very much. <laughs> Van Lith, 23 points for her. She's got four threes. Robinson, a new career high, yes! She finally broke the 10-point mark. And the crowd, you can understand why those Louisville fans love that kid. No doubt about it, a fan favorite, a coach's favorite, a teammate's favorite. A Stephanie White favorite, a I Stephanie think. A Stephanie White oh. favorite. Area vets, that's sweet into Old Acre, but Kind of an old school ball player, Mikasa Robinson doing all the little things right. There's just such an appreciation for someone who, who understands their role, who every night you know what you're going to get from them. There's no surprises, incredibly consistent, has come off the bench most of her career, has been a starter these last seven games, and has continued to elevate, be the energy, be the leader, be the heart and soul of this Louisville Cardinals team. And showing a lot of emotion now. Louisville in great shape to win what would be their 21st game of the season. Robinson again, a new career high with 12 points. Also has six rebounds, seven assists. Dixon quickly got it over to Russell. Now Louisville can work some clock and get ready for the big Notre Dame rematch on Sunday. That'll be on ESPN at noon Eastern. Russell, a little bit too strong, but Robinson chased after it. Russell able to gather it in. And the crowd at the KFC Yum Center knowing they're going to go home with a W in their pockets. Robinson with the desperation shot. Shot clock was about to go off. So Mikasa Robinson having a career night tonight. Well, she started off just getting after it. Hustle plays defensively. Then she attacks in transition. We really used to seeing those types of plays on the defensive end from Mikasa Robinson, but taking some more ownership. How about the step through, the footwork offensively, and the confidence that she's played with on the offensive end. And I tell you, Van Lis gonna get a lot of the headlines with the 25 points, but this was a Mikasa Robinson night. There's another rebound. Miami already playing shorthanded without Spearman. You mentioned the foul trouble. And just too much 
Van Lift and Robinson and the rest of the Cardinals who will pull out this victory. Liz Dixon has a double-double. She's had a heck of a night, too. 13 points, 10 rebounds. Cochran. If there's a loose ball, there's a good chance number five and White's going to chase it down. It really is, and Louisville all night long has been so good on the offensive glass, getting themselves multiple possessions. Anytime Miami tried to make a run, Louisville was able to stop it. And that person right there, Haley Van Lith, did it quite often. Miami will fall to 17 and 11, 10 and 7 in the lead. They will host Virginia on Sunday. Acosta Robinson, Haley Van Lith, Liz Dixon, all in double figures tonight. They will welcome in Notre Dame on Sunday for what could be their last home game for Robinson and the other seniors. Because this is the unusual thing, right, Steph? Projected as a sixth seed, they probably will not host in the first and second rounds unless they have a great run in the ACC tournament. Now, mathematically, we may be able to play ourselves into it, but it is unusual. And Sunday, senior day, it's going to be a special day for this group. So Miami falls 71-57. Haley Cavender with 16 points, including career point number 2,000. But it was just too much. Mikasa Robinson and the rest of the Cardinals as they take it by the final of 71-57.